Okay. So you were asking me about the um, about the influence of Berlin as a place. Yeah, on, on your work and uh, on, your, your social uh, behavior yeah. uh, with others uh, to be together with people you don't know but mm -hmm. you are related to them because of your work. Um, but also to yeah to, to meet people on the street, you know. I mean, did you become more open to others? Uh, and this is also something that I, that maybe is something I, I can find in your work, in the way you play saxophone, yeah. you compose. Uh, is there something, or maybe not? Yeah. So as I was explaining, like when you're in a new place, um, you're forced into a into. Um, uh, a situation where you're, you're, you have to be more alert, more sen sensitive to your surroundings, where you're thinking much harder about uh, language and um, uh, and your place in the map in the map of a new situation, um, and also you're forced to very quickly establish a new community. Like you don't have friends in the place, mm -hmm. so uh, uh, in some sense uh, you have to be more aggressive about making connections with people. You have to be more friendly, get over... Uh, for me, I have to get over whatever shy shyness I might normally have and, um, and make connections. Uh, it's a, there's a kind of urgency. Just in many, in many dimensions, there's an urgency in uh, becoming more comfortable in, in German. There's an urgency in understanding the dynamics and the history of the place, mm -hmm. um, of connecting to uh, various communities uh, in the city. Um, so, uh, Do you like that? I do, actually. Honestly... Um, you enjoy it? I enjoy the disorientation um, of no, not understanding my surroundings completely. So, okay. I mean, uh, uh, I understand, I appreciate the comfort of being living in my small village and knowing that if I go shopping, I'm going to meet five friends in the in the grocery aisle. But uh, but I I like the alertness that's forced on me in a place like this. And I think uh, um, our creative work, intellectual life, it benefits from just the fact that our um, that my sensitivity is uh, kicked up a few notches just by the disorientation of being in new mm -hmm. surroundings. Okay, that sounds great actually. I, I, I read that you lived also for one year in Japan. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I was in Sapporo. Uh, how did Japan influence your work, life and taste? Yes. Uh, um, yeah, and I mean, Japan was, in a sense, even more disorienting than uh, living in Germany. Um, the, the cultural situation is more remote from the, what I'm familiar with. And uh, I think it gave me new um, empathy for people who are outsiders in a cultural situation because uh, there it was very clear to me and to everyone around that uh, I was a visitor. Um, and uh, that was a, a very moving experience to, um, uh, to understand uh, the discomfort that uh, outsiders feel in, in, um, in my culture, people who aren't, uh, were visitors to my uh, town or my culture. Um, it also made me appreciate sort of the, the generosity of the people who made connections to me while I was there. Mm -hmm. And I, I have um, many good friends in Japan um, and in Germany as well. So it's, I, I think I am, um, more acutely uh, grateful to the people who reach across cultural boundaries to make connections. Okay, yeah. Uh, can you tell me uh, how you understand beauty? 
beauty, yes. Mm. Even you look through the eyes of being a, a stranger in, in Japan and now in, in Berlin and also you United States. But how how in general do you see beauty now? Mm -hmm. And where does it come from? Yeah. What is beautiful for you? <laughs> I think what I the experience that I seek out um, are experiences that um, teach me something. I want to discover something in my experience. I want to um, learn something. And oftentimes, uh, experiences uh, like that are not comfortable. So I, I'm not sure if uh, I want to say that these are, I want to call that beauty or not. I mean, oftentimes, we think of uh, beauty, experience of uh, beauty as very pleasurable. pleasurable. So I, I'm not sure that beauty is such an important cate category for me as an artist, um, whereas uh, um, discovery and uh, experiment are much more urgent categories for me. And I think this is true in my life uh, when I'm not making art as well. Um, uh, yeah, I want to learn something new. I want to experience something new. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. The newness okay. and the learning, the, the, that's uh, my priority. That's a nice answer. Thank you. <laughs> well, I, I want to come back to your uh, musical life. Uh, you, you told me earlier that uh, the way how you well, if you, you come from the United States, you want to stay in Europe, maybe in the Netherlands, maybe in Germany, uh, you are searching for uh, colleagues, for uh, fellow musicians mm -hmm. from here, uh, but still you have kind of difficulty to let them understand what your music is about and how to interpret it. Mm -hmm. uh, can, can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, situation. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's uh, typical for artists to um, be working in a language that other people and even other artists don't really understand yet. And of course it should be that way because uh, we're um, explorers trying to develop new language. So, um, uh, if, if, if you understood already what I'm doing, it would probably mean you saw it somewhere else before. In, in which case, I'm, uh, I'm not working on the right thing, because <laughs> someone's done it already. <laughs> so, uh, um, I mean, this is, I think, at the heart of the project of being, uh, of, of creative work, is that we're, we're we're developing languages that aren't uh, that aren't spoken yet, or aren't understood yet, and um, and we're trying to invite everyone and ourselves as well to engage with this problem of in inventing language and inventing um, uh, inventing connections, inventing uh, social structures that we don't yet have. Um, and this, is, uh, this can be uncomfortable, this, this is uh, kind of um, un unfamiliar territory, um, but we should be welcoming it. I mean, the, in, in, what we do have is um, uh, not satisfactory, right? We don't live in the, we don't live in the society we want. Um, uh, we don't yet... Uh, um, we don't yet speak a language that, um, that gives us the connections to each other and the social structures that we want to live in. So, um, so I think that's a kind of urgent need for us. And so that problem is, yeah, that's our life's work. So why not? <laughs> yeah, 
But but you told me uh, earlier that uh, the the understanding of uh, music is different wherever you go. You like, mm -hmm. when you play with people in Amsterdam, they understand your music uh, maybe more a freer way, and and here maybe they understand it more like something that is becoming more traditional or yeah. something like that. I, I think this is also uh, very interesting. How how do you deal with that? Because it's it's you you want something, right? And yeah. You you face a different kind of understandings. Mm -hmm. Even it's the same language that you have to deal with. Yeah. And that is music. So I mean this. Yeah, this is kind of vivid when, when you're talking about um, uh, improvising, and I'm an improviser, and I come to a new place, and sort of the understood um, language of improvising in that new place is different than the one that I, that I, that's familiar to me. And that just intensifies uh, the most important modes of improvising, listening and um, paying attention to uh, um, trying to understand how, um, what are the significant features of the things that I'm hearing, mm -hmm. of what people are saying to each other in the situation. And improvisation has this wonderful conversational um, uh, dynamic, right? You're in dialogue with each other. So, uh, You make some sounds and you're trying to elicit response and I'm making sounds and trying to elicit response. We're trying to make connections across our differences. And at the same time, we're trying to celebrate each other's differences. It's not like I want you to speak my language or I want to speak your language. It's more um, how out of this difference do we make uh, significance. Um, in, in, a fact, in fact, it's a kind of celebration of this uh, difference. So, it, yeah, it's uh, a, a necessary ingredient, in fact, that we don't speak the same language. So, we know, of course, there's, there are um, uh, very well established genres that have a kind of status quo where people uh, s seamlessly and fluently speak the same language. And, uh, and that can be a wonderful, exciting thing. It's not a thing that interests me so much as an artist. Um, uh, I'm much more interested in this other s situation of s struggling with this difference. Struggling, okay. Well, that brings me to the next topic, it's architecture. Mm. Uh, how do you like living here in your house, <laughs> in your apartment here? And how different is it uh, to the experience you had in Japan or your home? Mm -hmm. And how does this feel? How, how does this city Berlin feel? With these uh, big buildings and small buildings, with the parks, uh, yep. with your small rooms, and yep. where you practice every day. Uh, how is that? How do you <laughs> like the architecture of this city? Berlin? Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, Berlin has a wonderfully varied ar uh, architectural landscape. Uh, uh, the the modernism of Berlin's new buildings feels to me uh, very optimistic and uh, for forward looking. Um, There's the, the old buildings, like the neighborhood in Prenzlauerberg where I'm living, which is uh, wonderfully charming. Um, uh, I like living in an apartment building with lots of other neighbors, and uh, I have um, uh, kids playing in the Hof, and... Um, I'm into Hof. Yeah, 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 it's... Uh, I, I enjoy the proximity of my neighbors here. And I like the, the fact that um, the city is uh, so easily navigated by walking, riding bicycles, public transportation, uh, the fact that most people don't own cars and uh, have easy access to the entire city. This is uh, a wonderful thing. I'd lo I would love to live in a place all the time where I don't have to own a car. 
car, a car is a kind of burden that's a, a necessary evil. Um, uh, my home in the States, I, I, I live in a beautiful old Victorian uh, house in this small town. Um, and uh, it's, it's quite large and comfortable. Um, but to tell you the truth, it's kind of liberating to be in a small apartment with a small fraction of my possessions. I just feel much more um, uh, mobile and uh, I'm, not, I'm not weighed down by all the stuff that fills up my house. I uh, just can uh, take off and enjoy, the, enjoy what the city has to offer. And, um, uh, so yeah, uh, I need a place where I can practice, so uh, uh, I'm lucky to have neighbors who will tolerate um, my practicing saxophone every day. That's not so easy in a big city. Um, it's not so easy to find a place to rehearse with people, so you have to re rent rehearsal spaces. That's not, that's an inconvenience. Mm -hmm. And how was that in Japan for you when you lived there? Um, in Japan, I was also lucky to find um, a place to practice pretty easily. In, uh, in the apartment building I was in, um, I also had pretty friendly neighbors who put up with me. Um, but I've lived in some other cities where it wasn't so easy. I was in a um, whole house in Stuttgart for a year where my neighbors did not at all tolerate my practicing and I had to uh, rent uh, over, um, um. Okay, I'm poor. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, this can happen everywhere, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about the social impacts of technology on music. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about that statement? Yeah, I, I mean, I, this has been a long time interest of mine because I think the ways. Uh, the ways we listen to music are governed by the technology. Um, uh, when, when I was young, I sat around with friends and we listened to records, and um, uh, it was a kind of uh, social uh, event. You know, you invited friends over and you looked at record covers and you put on a record. Um, a record is an album of music, so you listen to the whole side. The order uh, of music that you listen to is designed by the, by the media. Mm -hmm. And um, also the distance of silence between the tracks. Exactly, and the, yeah. you had 20 minutes of, of music and then you had to flip the record over. Um, you needed a stereo system and so on. So, um, you know, um, my students today, uh, um, don't own stereo equipment. They listen to everything on their phone. They listen through earbuds. Um, they have tens of thousands of songs on their phones, and usually it's in being played in some random order. So the, the concept of an album has changed completely. Um, in a way, it's gone, right? The yeah, concept, yeah. Or the, the old concept. Yes. Yeah. People are downloading individual songs instead of downloading albums of songs. And, uh, and rather than a social situation, uh, the music is just wherever you are, wherever you're going, in transit, you're plugged in and listen to music. So uh, it's a very different experience of music and, and um, my students are uh, um, eclectic in a way that I, I wasn't. Uh, you know, I was uh, immersed in a couple of genres of music because, uh, and they're listening to thousands of songs every all the time mm -hmm. with this random shuffle. Different styles are juxtaposed, juxtaposed, and um, so it's fascinating. Um, uh, uh, their attention is uh, organized in a different way. Um, and I think this is going to continue to change. Um, uh, and the way music is composed has changed, consequently, and the, the idea that 
one track of popular music has samples from dozens of different songs and maybe even many different genres are all uh, collaged in one song. So, uh, yeah, so the way we think about music is quite, uh, quite different. And the way we compose music is quite different. I mean, I'm composing music with the computer, uh, coding computer algorithms to generate music. Um, this is only possible because the technology has revol undergone a revolution yeah, in yeah. our lifetime. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it sounds all very interesting, but we don't have so much time, so I just can give us a kick and we just go further to the next one. Sure. Uh, do you reflect political views and statements also in your compositions? Because yeah. this, this world we live in now, it's, it's changing so rapidly mm -hmm. and so fast and uh, it goes to all kinds of directions we never thought of this could happen. You know? yeah. So at, at least I think there are many, many topics that you are not agreeing with uh, or you do agree with, uh, you welcome that. But does this go also in, inside of your way of yeah. composing? Now that's, that's a great question because uh, um, certainly our current situation m makes it urgent to um, uh, make some sort of commentary or witness or input into our social situation. To somehow. Yeah, to um, um, uh, move things in different directions or um, to participate. Basically, I think uh, uh, I want to define myself as an act activist, as someone who's trying to um, work for change. So, so good question. How how is that? How is my artwork part of that? Um, most of the artwork I do and music I do is not uh, uh, explicitly committed uh, or explicitly political. Like I I don't. I typically take up uh, explicit political statements in my work. Um, uh, I have a couple of pieces that use texts that have some sort of uh, uh, social um, comment or angle, but that's not typically the way that I work. Um, I do think that um, I do think of my um, uh, engagement in designing systems as. A, as making analogies to the idea that um, uh, we need new ways of organizing society. Mm -hmm. um, and to, to create new systems is to speak to the possibility of offering alternatives alternative ways of organizing ourselves, organizing our thinking, organizing our sensibilities, organizing our interactions with each other. Um, so, uh, creating new systems is kind of utopian project. And I, in the way I talk about my work, um, or uh, sometimes I offer my work with texts as a way of contextualizing um, the way I work, I try and um, orient the understanding of my creative work in that direction. As um, I try and make that analogy, that um, an experimental disposition is a kind of revolutionary disposition, and uh, to do experimental work is to speak to the need for alternatives um, and the need to. Um, Imagine uh, other ways of uh, organizing our society. Mm -hmm. and so, you? I hope so. I mean, this is what I'm trying to do. Okay. Yes. Great. Well, I heard some uh, samples of, 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 of your work, and I noticed that there are voices inside. Mm -hmm. So, where do you go, female or male? <laughs> in, in, in voices, what do you prefer to have in your, or do you, or is it more coming and going? 
Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I don't really think there's a preference. Um, you don't. No, I I don't really have a preference. Okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. I. Um, okay. Okay. A voice is a kind of instrument, a kind of character, and uh, um, and this is, in a way, going back to your question about beauty. I mean, the uh, uh, I don't think of a particular instrument as being more beautiful um, or. Uh, a quality of voice, a, a male voice or a female voice as being more beautiful. It's um, in, in a particular work, th there are functional needs for creating structure and creating difference. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and you choose materials that, uh, that create those functions. The, the, yeah, the yeah. functions that are needed for that particular work. Mm -hmm. To yeah. articulate that particular difference. Yeah. yeah. Well, that brings me actually to the next one. Uh, you you compose compositions including chamber music, mm -hmm. uh, electro acoustic music, and uh, jazz. Uh, and how important are these tastes uh, that you create so different ways uh, of music, of sounds, uh, and, and why is this so important for you to choose? Chamber music, electroacoustic, and jazz. Uh huh. And well, not the Schlager. <laughs> not Schlager. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, these um, these genre categories, in in part, come from different traditions, mm -hmm. but also they're largely created by um, uh, by capitalist needs. Um, the, the, these are sales categories that are created yeah. by uh, uh, advertising, and to that extent, they really don't interest me. In in a way, I'm uh, composing to resist the categories of commerce. I mean, commerce is totally uninteresting to me as as an artist. I, I want to make my living as a creative person, but uh, the commerce is really not interesting. So, uh, to the extent that Jazz is a category of sales. I'm totally uninterested, um, and it's really at the margins of these categories that the most interesting work is being done. The the stuff on the fringes between jazz and classical music, or between jazz and Bulgarian music, or be, uh, between classical music and rock. I mean, these are this is where the interesting work is happening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you tell me a little bit how you compose? How you do that? Uh, do you need to have kind of inspiration before that? Do you know exactly now I can do it? Now I can go that direction? Uh, you work with your computer, you work in the plane, you work in the U-Bahn <laughs> or the S-Bahn or while you're walking a lot, you walk a lot. Yep. Uh, do you get ideas there and uh, how, how do you do that? Yeah, I, I mean, um, uh, um, I think for artists um, who are serious about their creative life, they're not waiting for inspiration. They show up to work every day. <laughs> She's the guy, my new president. Yes. So it doesn't mean every day I come up with a masterpiece, but uh, um, I, I have to show up and, um, and um, make the effort. And that means that uh, the, the project and the problems are always with me. I carry them with me even when yeah. I'm not at my desk. Yeah. So um, maybe later over dinner or a beer with a friend, uh, ideas happen and they're welcome and I'll remember them. But um, but really, uh, for some period every day, I have to be uh, there on the job. Yeah. And oftentimes that's with the computer. Um, sometimes composing looks like uh, writing code. Um, sometimes composing is um, uh, editing uh, sound files. Sometimes it's practicing the saxophone or working out things at the piano. So there are a lot of different modes of uh, of creativity. I, I think for me, I, I need that variety to, uh, um, 
Yeah, I, I just need that variety. Yeah. Okay. I can't just work in one yeah. place. Yeah.